What's up YouTube? Back with your boy Luke. Hey guys, check this out. I'm going to tell you guys a smuggling story down at the San Ysidro border that I played a part in. A lot of people probably say I shouldn't say shit like this on the internet, but at the end of the day, I did the crime and I did the time. I paid my debt to society so I'm free to talk about it and that's what I'm going to talk about. Alright guys, I'm going to take you back to the early 2000s. A good friend of mine called me and she said, hey, the family has a problem. We have this cousin, and we're going to call him Sandoval, right? We're going to change the names to protect the innocent. She goes, Sandoval's down in Tijuana, Mexico. He just got deported. The guy had been in prison in the States, and he got deported into Mexico. And she said, he has cirrhosis of the liver. He's going to die. He doesn't have much time to live. We'll want to get him back up here to Los Angeles so he can be with the family, so he can die with the family, and he can be buried over in East LA in the cemetery and I told her I said you know I think that's a bad idea I said for a couple of reasons I said number one there's a good chance that we're gonna get caught and if we get caught with his record they're gonna send him back to prison he's gonna die in prison he's gonna die alone in prison and it's not gonna be a good experience for him or the family why don't you just leave the guy down in Tijuana Mexico get him the best care you can and the family travel from LA down to Tijuana and just handle it that way. She said, absolutely not. We've made up our mind. We're ready to pay. We want him in the United States. I said, okay. I said, well, seeing as though me and you are good personal friends, I don't want anything to do with this, but I am going to pass you off to the right person. She said, okay. So anyways, I go down to TJ with her and we go in this house and we meet this cousin. We're going to call him Sandoval. And uh, Sandoval was a real kind of a, a loser. I mean, he had been nothing but a screw up his whole life. Cost the family thousands of dollars in attorney fees, car accidents. I don't think the guy ever had a job. I mean, it's just one of these situations, right? So I meet this guy and he's big as a hippopotamus, okay? He's huge. And I'm just like, man, I don't know what to do. Um, because at that time, there were basically only three ways to get people across the border. Um, you could boat them across. You read about boats in Imperial Beach and even all the way up to Orange County getting busted all the time. The Ponga boats, you know, washing up on shore. You could walk them through the mountains or through the desert, which was completely out of hand. This guy was in a wheelchair. He wasn't walking anywhere. Three, you could put them in the trunk of a car. If you could find a driver in a car, and you could just chance it in the borderline. But this guy's not getting in the trunk of a car. I mean, he's in bad health. He's in bad shape. So I completely, I didn't know what to do. So I went ahead and I gave this guy named Raul a call. And again, that's not his name. It's close to his name. But uh, we called him the best in the West. Because it didn't matter the situation. Raul could always figure something out. I called him up. I told him what was going on. Raul said, let me come take a look at the situation. He showed up and like that, he said, I know what we need to do. He said, what we have to do is we got to get a wheelchair. We got to put him in a wheelchair. We got to get a blanket across him. We got to get an ID that looks like him from an American citizen. And we're going to push this guy right across the border. And I said, I'm not pushing anybody across the damn border. He said, you leave that to me. Don't worry about it. I'm like, okay. So. Fast forward, you know, 72 hours later, uh, been down in Zona Norte, talking to a lot of the hookers in Zona Norte, and a lot of you guys don't know, but when the hookers rip people off in Zona Norte and they steal their passports or their green cards or their driver's license, those documents make their way into smugglers' hands. And then if you can find someone that matches up with that passport or that document, they send them through the border. So, been in Zona Norte, come up with an ID, come up with a wheelchair and came up with a crackhead who agreed who had no clue what was going on this guy was just down in Zona Norte buying dope okay and Raul tells him hey I'll give you a hundred dollars to push my cousin across the border in the wheelchair to his family because I can't cross the border and you know the family's waiting on him and the lines too big will you do it well for those of you who don't know crackhead to do anything for a hundred dollar bill all right so, and uh, wow, I can't believe this was like 16 years ago already. Anyway, so 
I'm sitting here watching thinking, you know, this isn't going to work. They put him in the borderline. I'm about 20 people back, okay, just kind of watching this situation unfold. They push him right up there. The border guard takes the ID, looks at the ID, looks at the guy. I couldn't hear what was going on. I really felt like the border guard knew what was up. I really felt like, though, he just didn't want to deal with the paperwork. And I felt like he didn't want to deal with the health issue and the situation at hand. Hands the ID back to him, says, you know, you guys have a good one or whatever. This guy pushes him right out of the border at San Ysidro, pushes him right up to the McDonald's trolley station where the family's waiting. They push him right outside to the parking lot over by the Jack in the Box, put this fool in the car and drive to Los Angeles that happened on a Saturday night. On Sunday afternoon, the whole family is having a dinner together, right? And he's there, and they're talking to him, and they're happy to have him there. Long story short, the guy ends up living another couple months. He did wind up dying, but he was with his family in Los Angeles when he died. Um, the crackhead got $100. My buddy Raul got about $4,000. And uh, he was actually super, super nice. And... Uh, gave me a pretty good chunk of that. Now, I will say this, guys. I don't condone that stuff anymore. I don't do that stuff anymore, and I don't recommend you do it. If you wind up doing that kind of stuff down by the border, you're going to wind up like me in federal lockup. It can ruin your life. It will definitely affect your life. So don't do that shit. I just wanted to tell you guys the story, okay? Guys, here's the thing. Um, I'm starting kind of another part to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be telling a lot of smuggler stories. Of course, the hookers in Zona Norte are always going to be number one. That's what we're going to talk about. But I'm also going to talk about some other bullshit that's kind of funny and some stories that I really don't want to tell in public, so to speak. All right. So I've got about seven or eight different stories, kind of like this one. Some of them are a lot better than this one. Uh, some of them are X-rated, some of them are R-rated, but basically what I'm doing with the YouTube channel is I'm going to wait till I get about a hundred of these stories stacked up, okay? And when we get a hundred of these stories stacked up, I'm going to open a different part of the channel for members only. It's going to be cheap. The money's only going to be four or five bucks a month probably. I'm just going to do it pretty much to kind of privatize my videos because I don't want content like not necessarily like this but I don't want some of the really crazy stupid shit that I did just being blasted out there I mean like you know if you're going to be a loyal dedicated subscriber I don't mind telling you that's fine but I don't need you know my neighbor's wife getting on the damn internet and watching this shit for free either and telling somebody okay I really don't care but anyways I'm just letting you know kind of what direction the channel's going and that's what I'm doing. I'm uh, coming up with a lot of crazy good shit. And uh, anyway, uh, there's some good stories that are already on there. I'll see you down the road. Hit that like and subscribe button if you hadn't already done it.